Not from me, um, but it did, it did before I got involved. Um, they wanted to do it for Series 1, um, but they realised it would be horribly expensive, so they sort of abandoned that, and then they, when it got to Series 4, they realised they could just about afford it if they went on location for two days. Um, they got a deal for the Rome sets, um, some of which then burned down, um, price went down, and so that was all, that was all kind of set up. Um, and then I got hired on the 9th of May, on Wednesday morning at 9.30. Not that I remember these things. <laughs> Hardly important um, at all. Burned into my memory. Um, and they said, would you like to do an episode of Doctor Who? And I sort of fell over and wet myself and said, yes, please. And they said, right, well, it's Pompeii. Uh, we've got two days on, on location in Rome. Uh, we're building sets right now. Uh, you need to do this, this, and this. Um, and if you could kind of do it by yesterday, that would be great. Um, so I sort of came in as they were halfway through planning it. And they said, oh yeah, hey, get these things in, off you go. We don't know what the story is, but, you know, good luck. <laughs> Did you get a shopping list then of all the things you need to in include? Kind of. Well, they, they, told, they told me it was Pompeii, um, day off the eruption, otherwise that'd be a bit boring. Um, and he said, I want, I want a nice Roman family, so we can, uh, Pompeii family, so we can see it through their eyes. I want some sort of fire monsters. And Usual things you find in Pompeii around the eruption. Yeah, that, 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 was, that was literally what he said, some sort of fire monsters. Don't know what they are, good, bad, whatever you want. Um, and I want a scene where an escape pod or a ship or something comes flying out of the volcano and it erupts. Nice. And that was it. So off you go. <laughs> Hang a story around that. Yeah, yeah. Do you see the latest things people go to to give you work? Absolutely. What I love is I didn't have a terribly good education, um, but if anybody here was, did Latin at school, Am I right? Mm. The family names were all actually from uh, the original Latin textbooks? They were, yeah. I didn't actually do that course. Um, everybody else did, except I went to this tiny little school in, in the, the wilds of Ireland. And I wish we had had those books, because they, they, they sent me a load of research stuff, including those books, which are great. We did, we did something, some other book, and we did poetry by Ovid, Latin poetry, which were pages and pages of these big, dramatic, Wagnerian nonsense things that always ended up with everyone getting killed and blood showering everywhere. And it, was, it was just really depressing. So, Not that you know, <laughs> getting killed in a volcano was cheerful. but I don't know. I got rescued, so I didn't mind. But there's a whole <laughs> set of books where actually they have Caecilius and um, Metella and Quintus and Evelina. And apparently there's a dog, which we didn't have. There, there was a dog, but um, that got that got cut out at a very early stage. I had, I had, it, I had it in there. Um, I didn't you. But, you know. Absolutely. Never work with animals. Dogs on set. It's just difficult. Not good. Yeah. Especially with volcanoes blowing up. Yeah. Doesn't help. They, they, I think, I think they, they wisely thought, why, why make this incredibly complicated, expensive story any more difficult for ourselves? So, I think Russell just went, no, hate dogs. Get rid of it. <laughs> that was it. That was the debate. <laughs> That might have been half of Russell's fan club lost now in that one sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Russell T. Davis hates dogs. <laughs> you heard it here first. How did you get involved? Uh, I knew Phil Collinson, producer, because um, he'd cast me in a 1950s series called Born and Bred, which ran for four years with James Bowler and Michael French, Sunday night um, drama. And... Phil came to see me in the theatre doing something and went, so when do you finish? And I said, oh, in about three months. And he went, oh, great, come and do a who? And I went, yeah, lovely, thinking, that's going to happen. <laughs> and sure enough, I got a phone call going, we've got this episode set in Pompeii and we're doing this family. Do you want to come in? Yeah. <laughs> so um, went in and met Colin Teague, who was directing it, uh, and Andy Pryor, who was casting, and was ridiculously over the top and frightened the pants off them because Phil had said something to me about she's a kind of Pompeii version of Hyacinth Bucket. <laughs> so I went in at full kind of tilt and I saw Colin just move backwards in sheer terror and I went, maybe you want something a little more real. Shall I just tone it down? He went, yes, please. <laughs> um, so I eventually persuaded him that maybe I could do something slightly gentler, although I still think I was a bit over the top in the beginning of it.